Hey guys, Jacob here. This is going to be a video that a lot of people have been wanting me to make for a very long time. Uh, I've been trying not to make this, you know, video for a while uh, due to the fact that um, I wasn't a huge fan of rifles back in the previous updates, but since they did do some buffs to them in this update, I've decided to make a rifle build, which has been being requested for quite a long time, and I've got around to it and found some pieces and messed around with this build, and this is pretty much the way I'm currently making it at the moment and the way I like it. Uh, there's a few things you can change to make this build a little bit different, which I will tell you guys that you can do, um, but at the moment... This is how I have it made. I am using the Sharpshooter Specialization. That's the first thing I'm going to tell you guys uh, the reasons why. is because you get stability from Sharpshooter and also you get headshot damage for using marksman rifles and rifles. Now the primary I'm using is the Classic M1A hitting at 95.2. And I'm using Ranger, Extra, and in Rhythm. Rangers every 5 meters you are from a target gets 2% weapon damage. Which is really good since uh, you're most likely going to be either, you know, probably a good medium distance or long distance away and you'll be able to get a little bit extra weapon damage that way you can shoot them from a distance up close and personal you can use this weapon i've done it a few times it's not too difficult uh, but you can always switch to something like the urban mdr if you want a gun that's you know a little bit more cqb and you can always use the sig 716 or something you like a little bit more but i'm using the m1a to the fact that it hits really hard it's also my favorite rifle in the game Extra, which is 20% magazine capacity, which is really nice to the fact the M1A actually does not hold that many rounds. So you're actually going to get that 20% extra capacity for your ammunition. In Rhythm, while equipped, enemy kills have a 5% chance to refresh active skill cooldowns. Can occur once every 60 seconds. The optics I'm using on this weapon are the Rugged Mini Reflex. You can always change these to different scopes if you want to. If you want more crit damage, you can always use the Russian Red Dot Sight for 5% extra crit damage. Now the grip, I am using the short grip for crit damage, which is 5%. Same goes for this one. You could always flip it to crit chance, reload speed, or something like stability. The magazine, which is the tightly packed marksman mag, which gives you five, per, uh, five extra rounds. Um, you can always use optimal range and stability, but uh, you can see when you take off the this magazine, you're going to have 12 rounds. And if you didn't have extra, you're going to have less than that. There is no muzzle attachment on this weapon. Just a reminder, you cannot put a suppressor or some you know, kind of muzzle brake on there. It's just standard. You can only put three attachments on this gun. One thing you will notice, rifles do have crit damage on them, so you're actually going to get 15% crit damage from just a rifle alone, which is really nice. Now, the secondary I'm using is the Eagle Bear. If you don't have an Eagle Bear, you don't really have to worry about it because this is a rifle build. Um, but a good secondary would be, for me at least, it's an AR. You could always use a shotgun or even uh, something like an SMG. But I'm using the Eagle Bear due to the fact that it does have crit mods on it on the scope and on the muzzle, which is 15% crit damage. So since you're going to be stacking crit on this build, it's actually not too bad to use this. And also, you'll have the weapon stability from Sharpshooter to have this gun shoot a little bit easier. Next is going to be the sidearm I'm using, which is the Orbit Pistol. You guys can always use something else, but I'm using the Orbit Pistol to the fact swapping from this weapon uh, within, you know, when you kill someone, a 10 seconds of killing an enemy, you actually get 40% crit chance and 50% crit damage for 15 seconds. So if you kill someone with this gun and you swap back to the other gun, you'll get a pretty nice buff crit chance and crit damage for 15 seconds. And this does have optimized and overlap. Overlap is really nice, so you actually get that 5% extra weapon handling while holstered. Uh, if you are encountering people who have, um, say, you know, chem launchers, stuff like that, and they're sticking you, you always can use a gun like this, which has Waskily, which will allow you to be able to uh, resist at least one ensnare effect. Now for the gear pieces, I am using 3-piece DNH. If you guys are not familiar with DNH, it does give you accuracy, crit damage, and crit chance. You can always use something like Wyvern if you really want to, but I'm using DNH to the fact I have a little bit better pieces. I'm using Concussion, Headshot, Grant 15% headshot damage for 2 seconds, 5% uh, with marksman rifles, not with rifles. Uh, one thing you can always use as well is this, which is another um, type of mask you can use if you want to have a little bit more weapon stability which is 15% we uh, weapon stability while aiming in. Now the backpack is a key component of this build. It has 14% crit damage, 24,000 health with 12,000 armor. I wish the armor was a little bit higher, but it's been a pain for me to get uh, a pretty decent backpack. You see I got one here, but this one is really not that good. It does have 11% crit chance, but I don't think I'll be able to use this one on any of these types of builds. And I also have this one, but this one has hardened instead of vital, which uh, you know is for another build. 
but this one is what the one you really want or one similar like this um the armor and the health are really nice but you can always switch out the armor for something um you know like weapon damage if you really want to to stack it up a little bit higher but spark is the main compete, uh, key component that you really want and that's going to be damaging enemies with kills uh, our skills or explosives grants 15% weapon damage for 15 seconds. You're going to have vital, which is 25% extra health. That's a unique talent, so you cannot stack those, and that gives you a little bit more health boost. The mod I'm using on this is a 1.5 weapon damage, crit range, and 4% crit chance. Now to the knee pads which are also DNH with 8.5 crit chance, and Composure, while in cover, grants 10% total weapon damage. So while you're in cover and you have something like this in Ranger, you're going to be able just to beam people and just smack them with your rifle, or even an AR if you're hitting them at a distance. I'm using Offensive Mod with crit chance and headshot damage and 1.5% weapon damage. And like you guys are probably wondering, why not use rifle damage? You can if you really want to, uh, but so far I've been going with a little bit more crit due to the fact that I have other stuff to make it for damage. And I'm using this build uh, in medium range instead of being right up in people's faces, which you can do, which it's not that difficult, um, but I tend to stand back a little bit more. Now I'll go to the gloves next, which are Fenner's gloves, which gives you that 10% extra assault rifle damage bonus. Uh, if you can find gloves that have obliterate on them, they're a little bit better if you guys want to use something like Overlord gloves to get the weapon damage for rifle damage and stack the percentage you get from Overlord in general and have obliterate, you can do that. But uh, sadly, I've not been able to find a pair of gloves like that, and these ones work just as well because they do give me the percentage for AR damage, which allows me, if someone's right in my face, and it's multiple people and I don't have time to really use the rifle and drop them. I could switch to the Eagle Bear and have a full auto gun to be able to melt someone when they're right there. But Obliterate is a key uh, item as well, which depleting an enemy's armor grants 30% crit hit damage for 15 seconds. So if you take out someone's armor, this will proc you 30% extra critical hit damage. And if you're ranged with Composure and Spark proc, also with Ranger, you should be able to snipe someone and just smack them with pure crit and just melt all of their armor and just melt them if they have no armor at all. The next piece is going to be this Wyvern Holster. You're actually going to get 7% crit hit damage from the holster alone, and this has 14% crit chance. This has actually not been rolled at all, and you have critical, which gives you 15% crit hit damage. I do have a crit hit damage and crit hit range mod on here, which gives you also 2% weapon damage. Now the final piece is the Araldi's Holding Vest, which is the pristine example of Araldi's Holdings chest piece, which is 10% accuracy from all your holdings. And if you wanted to use another piece of Araldi, you can always get that 10% extra headshot damage if you wanted to flip the gloves out. This one has 29,000 health instead of armor and 15% weapon damage with perfect vigilance. If you guys are not familiar, vigilance is a new talent that was out of the game. Same goes for spark and composure and concussion. Those are all four of the new talents that have been added in the newest update. Gain 30% weapon damage, taking damage disables his buff for 4 seconds. So you're probably wondering why use this talent if you're going to be able to taking damage. Um, overall, you're supposed to be you know in medium range with this weapon, and while your teammates are supposed to hit targets up front, and you're supposed to support them from the sidelines or in the back and hit enemies when they least expect it. So you're actually going to get 30% weapon damage. So if you're actually going to be using this, you'll be able to stack that on top of stuff like Spark, Composure, and Ranger, and be able to just stack damage with crit, and that way you can just hit people when they least expect it and just smack them with a crap ton of damage. Damage. This does have two mods on it. It has a critical chance and a critical hit damage mod, which is 3.5 and 4%. Also, a defense protocol mod, which is 5,000 health and 15% bleed resistance. I do have a 20 on here, but I think it's armor, and I went with health to increase the health a little bit more for a little bit, tiny bit more survivability. And you can see it has 15% bleed resistance. This build has no hazard protection built into it. So having that bleed resistance is really nice in case someone does have a bleed build. But at the same time, you're supposed to be in the back a little bit away from stuff like hives. That way it can't just, you know, melt you. But if you're in a close quarter situation, you you might need that ble the bleed resistance. That way um, it doesn't melt you instantly. Now that's me about it for the gear. And you guys already know about the weapons. I'll go now I'll go into the skills, which I'm using the striker drone, which is for to proc spark. You can obviously use explosives and grenades, but as long as this is hitting someone, it will constantly proc spark, and you'll be able to have that 15% extra damage always up all the time. Next is going to be the chem launcher. If you guys you know are using, um, you know you can always use a hive 
as well for heals, which is the, uh, I think it's called the Restore. Yeah, this is it. Um, I don't really use this that much, but if you guys want to use uh, heals instead of using this, you can always use this to heal yourself instead of the Kim Launcher. And if you're also not running, if you want to run this on Survivalist, you can always use the Mender Seeker Mine. But that's it for the skills. I will show you guys the stats real quick on the M1A. Make sure this is refreshed because sometimes it doesn't show. These are all the talents if you guys want to see them. You see 95,000 weapon damage and 62,000 PvP weapon damage. This is hitting at 56 crit chance and 98 crit damage. But that's also not counting obliterate. So you're actually going to get 30% on top of that extra crit damage. You can see all the grips, the mods, all the stuff where the crit chance is coming from. And you can see that you get stability from the uh, talent on sharpshooter. 5% weapon handling, which is from Overlap. You can see the Assault Rifle Damage Bonus, which is from Frenus, and you have it selected on the Gloves and on the Sharpshooter as well. 15% Rifle Bonus, which is directly from the Sharpshooter. If you want more Rifle Bonus, like I said, you can always stack Rifle Mods or use a piece of Overlord. We'll get on to the Defensive, so you guys can see here, 194,000 Armor, 138,000 Max Health, uh, health regeneration and you can see there's the bleed resistance like I was talking about but there's zero hazard protection so be aware if people are using bleed builds but that's it guys thank you all for watching I know these amount of people have been wanting to see this for a while I hope you guys all enjoyed as always I'll catch you guys in the next one and make sure you guys subscribe more division 2 content